The East Africa community has been loaded as the most progressive regional bloc in Africa. It has achieved a number of milestones and the implementation of the single customs territory framework is among them. In 2013, a major uh, initiative uh, was commenced by the heads of state to improve the movement of goods across borders. And that is what uh, uh, brought into, uh, into place the ongoing initiative about the single customs, uh, uh, the, the single customs territory framework, and which is part of what we are discussing um, uh, at this point. So it's two years since we started the uh, concrete steps to deal with the SCT, and uh, during that time we have made milestones, very significant milestones that have had very uh, important and um, impactful outcomes for business. The single customs territory project has eliminated multiple way bridges, police and custom checks along the Mombasa Kampala Kigali route, and introduced computerized systems which have cleared the hurdles to free trade that the Northern Corridor was infamous for. From the Ugandan perspective, we've uh, seen significant benefits, not only from the business perspective in the sense that the cost of doing business for Ugandan traders has significantly gone down. And indeed, with the figures that uh, CG Kenya has mentioned, if we, before we were taking 18 days, the trader was taking 18 days to clear goods from Mombasa to Kampala, and it's now on an average of six, four to five, six days, that significant reduction in the cost of doing business. But at the same time, with the efficiencies coming out of the single customs territory and having one point of declaration, it means that the risks to revenue that we were experiencing before have now been plugged. And indeed, we see a significant increases in revenue collection, especially from um, high revenue goods for Uganda, especially like fuel. Especially for Rwanda, if you look at the World Bank doing business indicators, Rwanda is lacking third in Africa after Mauritius and South Africa. But one indicator that we are struggling to meet and perform very well has been trading across borders. And for very two obvious reasons, one is the time that it takes to carry our goods from the ports, that's, that's Mombasa and Dar es Salaam, and number two, that the cost that is involved. So what is, it is coming to address this time around is to reduce that time, which my colleagues have mentioned from 21 days for Rwanda to about six, seven days, in terms of cost, and how do you reduce the cost? The city has reduced the cost by reducing the economic actors across the chain of clearance. Still, there are some issues that require further fine-tuning. We need to work on certain frameworks for clearing of, of goods. Uh, the warehousing regime is one of those, and uh, also the enforcement to ensure that goods that are destined for warehousing are actually not rerouted to the... Um, the frontline state, or to, if we are talking about Kenya, Uganda, goods that are cleared for warehousing to Uganda should not end up in in uh, in, in in Kenya. So those are some of the issues that we are still trying to address, and I'm sure that once we address all those risks, uh, it will just be an issue of how do we fully roll it out. Despite the hurdles, experts remain upbeat about the progress made. The SCT has got risks, but we are managing those risks. But it has also provided us with huge opportunities, as you're saying, to address uh, revenue leakages and uh, to bring the customs uh, authorities closer in the, in the sharing of information. So for us, SCT is really something that uh, uh, we are very, very uh, positive about and which, going forward, we would like to see uh, succeed even better. And even as the ESC further deepens the integration process, it is believed that this is just one of the ways that the region is positioning itself to become a key player in Africa's economic arena. What we are trying to do here this time around, we are saying, let us try to reduce the time, reduce the paperwork, make it seamless flow, and also try to leverage from each other's knowledge in terms of capacity building, in terms of private sector, how can people trade across the borders with ease? How can they open up businesses in our respective countries 
all geared towards improving competitiveness for the region and seamless clearance of